Hello students, good morning everyone. So this is our third consecutive organic class. So herein we will discuss aldehyde, ketone and carboxylic acid. So this is also a very important chapter of organic chemistry and this is and every year we have seen that lots of questions are asked from this chapter. So what we will discuss here, aldehyde, ketone and carboxylic acid. So first thing we have to understand that these, these compounds are carbonyl compound. Why carbonyl compound? Because every compound contain R, C, O, R, moiety. Here R is R1. So R1 and R are different from different compound. So if we change this R1, we will get a new compound for every cases. Now first we will see that due to presence of this carbonyl moiety, this carbonyl moiety, these compounds are collectively called carbonyl compound. So also aldehyde, ketone and carboxylic compound because carboxylic acid compounds are named as carbonyl compound. Now first we will see in this section types of carbonyl compound. Second nomenclature. Third preparation. Fourth properties and here we will discuss both physical and chemical and finally question and answer. So I think this chapter will be very important for you. So first we will see types of carbonyl compound. So as already I have told that carbonyl compounds are classified like this way. So we will change this R1 and R will get a new compound. So first when R and R1 both are same that is aldehyde hydrogen. So what we will get? This is known as formaldehyde. Second R is alkyl or aryl and R1 is hydrogen. Then it is aldehyde. So remember when CHO group is there, this CHO group is characteristic for aldehyde. So if a compound contains this CHO group, then obviously this compound should be aldehyde. Now third R equal to alkyl or aryl and R1 also alkyl or aryl. Then what we will get? RO, RCO, R1. So this is known as ketone. So what we have seen in aldehyde? Aldehyde is such compound which contain one hydrogen adjacent to that carbonyl. Means carbonyl contain one hydrogen. So that is aldehyde. And for ketone both adjacent moiety will be carbon 1. Means both carbon are at attached with that carbonyl. So these are ketone. Now, R equal to alkyl or aryl and R1 equal to OH. So we will get carboxylic acid. So these are known as carboxylic acid. And if we change this OH by several other group, then we will get several other acid derivative product. So from here we will get acid chloride. From here we get this is ester, from this acid we can get anhydride, this is amide. So these are several compounds we can get from the acid. So these are called acid derivative. So these three are the main compound that is aldehyde, ketone and carboxylic acid. Now nomenclature. So here we will discuss some terms which are used for the aldehyde and ketone and carboxylic acid. We will not go to the details of the nomenclature. So what we will see for aldehyde here L is used for nomenclature. For ketone O is used and for carboxylic acid oic acid is used. So and other name will be given by according to that number of carbon present based on this. So what we can see here I am writing num carbon number aldehyde, ketone and 
carboxylic acid. So, carbon number 1 means 1 carbon present. What is the example? That is formaldehyde. This is a common name formaldehyde and the UPEG name is methanol. We know that for 1 carbon that uh, compound name start meth. So, it will be methanol. So, ketone there will be no ketone with 1 carbon and then formic acid and UPEG name will be methanoic acid. Similarly, for 2 carbon it will be acetaldehyde. Acetaldehyde is the common name and UPEG name will be ethanol. So, ketone there will be no ketone because ketone will start from 3 carbon. We know that for ketone compound 2 carbon are attached with the carbonyl group. So, acid will be acetic acid and the UPEG name will be ethanoic acid. For 3 carbon propanol and ketone will be acetone and for this acetone UPEG name will be propanone. So, what will be the carboxylic acid? Propanoic acid. So, these are 3, car um, three carbon examples are given accordingly we can get butanol, butanone and butanoic acid and so on. So, I am directly going to aryl. So, first member is benzaldehyde. So, what will be the ketone? Acetophenone or you can write 2 phenyl ethanone. So, carboxylic acid will be benzoic acid and so on. So, these are all the various nomenclature of the compound. Next is preparation. So, first we will see preparation of aldehyde. So, what are the process? Oxidation of alcohol. So, example. So, now question is that if we are oxidizing this alcohol, how we can stop this in aldehyde? Because we know this aldehyde is also susceptible to oxidize and it will uh, finally form the carboxylic acid. Now, for this purpose, actually mild oxidizing agent PCC or PDC are used. You remember that PCC is pyridinium chlorochromate and PDC is pyridinium dichromate. So, PCC and PDC are used to oxidize alcohol to aldehyde because this actually stop this means oxidation in aldehyde stage. Similarly, so what is the structure of PCC? Pyridinium chlorochromate. So, this is the PCC. Oxidation of alcohol also possible if you use copper and 573 Kelvin temperature. So, if we oxidize alcohol in presence of copper at high temperature, we will end up with aldehyde. So, we will get aldehyde compound. So, like this, we will get from alcohol, we will get aldehyde. Now, second is ozonolysis, very important. Ozonolysis reaction. So, what is ozonolysis reaction? So, in ozonolysis reaction, we treat alkene compound with ozone and followed by reduction in presence of zinc water. So, what is the mechanism? Zinc H2O or Me2S means any reducing agent are used to give RCHO and R1CH. So, we can see that starting from alkene it is reacted with ozone, this will give ozonite and this ozonite is further reduced by zinc water or M2S, so it will give formation of L2 aldehyde. So, example this and this will give 2 acetaldehyde. Thus, in exam, this kind of question always asked that either that how we can synthesize propanaldehyde and formaldehyde. So, for this kind of question what you will do first you will draw the compound like this way and what is formaldehyde? This is actually formaldehyde. So, we will write 
two aldehyde this way and we will remove the oxygen part. So, what we will get? CS3, CH2, CH double bond, CH2. So, from this alkene that is butene, one butene, if we ozonolysis of this one butene, we will get propanaldehyde and benzaldehyde. Like this way, any kind of example are given. So, we can do this way and we will get the starting alkene compound. And if other question ask like that, what will happen for this compound if ozonalized this. So, what we will do? You will just break in between this double bond and put one oxygen each. So, what we will get? pH CHO that is benzaldehyde and CH3 CHO that is acetaldehyde. So, like this kind of question are asked. So, this is ozonolysis. Next is hydration of al alkyne. So, hydration of alkyne key. So, this is alkyne and if it is reacted with HgSO4 or Hg2 plus and H2O, what will give? So, first it will give a adduct compound like this. Now, if we see that which position will be more del positive. So, this carbon is more del positive because this carbon if it is get del positive then it will be stabilized by this R group. So, what will happen? Water will be attacked and it will give it will not so, what it will form? Enol compound. So, this is actually enol compound. So, this enol compound immediately tautomerize to form this carbonyl compound. So, if you see that from alkyne we will get carbonyl compound. So, this is basically look like ketone, but we know that if we started with acetylene that is R equal to hydrogen then it will be a acetaldehyde. So, only acetylene gives the acetaldehyde. Other any alkyne will not give any aldehyde compound. Only that ketone compound will be formed. Now, preparation of ketone. So, here from here actually we see that various reaction which is similar to aldehyde. Some reaction which, is, which only give aldehyde and some reaction which only give ketones. So, for first we have seen that oxidation of alcohol. So, for this purpose what kind of alcohol it will give that is secondary alcohol. So, oxidation of alcohol that is R, C, H, O, H this is secondary alcohol. This secondary alcohol it will give oxidation. So, what it will give? RCO. So, this is ketone. So, example. So, here in also the oxidizing agent is PCC or PDC. Similarly, if we oxidize with mild oxidizing agent like copper at high temperature it will form acetone. Now, for ozonolysis here it must be like this. So, for ketone at least 2 means R R1 or R2 R3 must be carbon otherwise ketone will not form. So, what we will get? Thus, we can see from this alkene we will get two ketones. So, as we discussed in aldehyde section that is if two ketones are given in exam and asked to draw the structure of starting alkene. So, you can immediately draw like the previous way. Let us suppose example is acetophenone and acetone. 
so from this what means if we get this acetophenone and acetone so what will be the alkene compound so first we'll draw like this and we'll remove the oxygen so what it will give ph c ch3 c ch3 ch3 so this alkene is the starting material which ozone analyze to give acetophenone and acetone now next it is hydration of alkyne so as already we have discussed i will not go to that further mechanism so we'll go to that example so first example that is propyne so you heard it will give acetone so as we discussed this hydration of alkene always will give that formation of ketone only acetylene will give the aldehyde so these are hydration of al alkyne now next is now next is distillation of calcium carboxylate salt so taking carboxylic acid rcwh when it is reacted with calcium hydroxide it will give formation of calcium salt of carboxylic acid so when this carboxylic acid salt is distilled it will give formation of this carbonyl compound now question is that by this way how we can synthesize aldehyde and other selective ketone so if we put r equal to hydrogen then it will be formic acid then what we will get h so this will give formation of formaldehyde and if we take acetate calcium acetate so it will give ketone now question is that if this is the process then if we want to synthesize the acetaldehyde from this how we can synthesize if we mix this calcium acetate with calcium formate then we will get formation of acetaldehyde so what is the mechanism of this reaction so if we heat only that calcium acetate then this methyl will go to that this carbonyl and it will form acetone but if we heat both that calcium acetate and calcium formate then this hydrogen will go to that this carbonyl this hydrogen will go to that this carbonyl so it will form two equivalent of acetaldehyde thus by this way we can synthesize that what aldehyde we need accordingly we will take the acid and we will take the formate uh, that is uh, calcium formate so it will give will form that acetal uh, aldehyde compound next is reduction of nitrile compound so what is this first that is stefans reaction stefans aldehyde synthesis chcn or hcn anything so essential to hcl it will give formation of this compound this is further reduced to so this is the synthesis of aldehyde so from this we'll get formation of formaldehyde now next is reduction of nitrile compound by divyl h so what is divyl h this is di isobutyl aluminum hydride so what is this aluminum so this is divyl h compound now this is actually mild reducing agent so this mild reducing agent actually reduce the uh, acetonitrile or any uh, nitrile compound and it will give the aldehyde compound so what is the reaction this is any organic nitrile compound so when it is reacted with divyl h what it will give this intermediate compound now this when it is hydrolyzed 
so it will give formation of rcho that is aldehyde so example ch3 cn that is acetonitrile when it is reacted with divalase then hydrolysis so what it will give formation of acetaldehyde next is from grignard reagent so what is the reaction when nitrile compound is reacted with grignard reagent that is i am taking ch3mgi so what it will give this ch3 group will react with the carbon and when this is hydrolyzed so what it will give this carbonyl compound now accordingly how we can synthesize the aldehyde so for aldehyde we have to take hydrogen cyanide hcn and any aldehyde we can synthesize let us suppose if we put ch3mgi then we will get acetaldehyde if we put uh, ethyl group means ethyl magnesium iodide then you will get propanaldehyde so let us suppose we will take phmgi means phenyl magnesium iodide so how it will give phcho that means benzaldehyde so by this way we can synthesize benzaldehyde now next is very important reaction that is rosenman reduction so rosenman reduction a almost every year some question are asked from this rosenman reaction in various exam like neat isc or cbsc and other various board exam so what is the rosenman reaction so this is the synthesis of aldehyde directly from the acid chloride so what is the reaction r c o c l this is acid chloride so it is reacted with palladium bsa4 hydrogen so it will give formation of acetaldehyde so palladium bsa4 hydrogen is the catalyst here and this reaction is known as rosenman reaction often this palladium bsa4 is poisoned by calcium carbonate or some quinoline as catalyst poison because we know this palladium bsa4 has tendency to reduce that aldehyde to alcohol so we want to if we want to stop this reaction in aldehyde stage then we have to put some catalyst poison we know that poison catalyst poison actually reduce the reactivity of the catalyst so it will give only the aldehyde so this is very important reaction so any reaction like this actually is given if hydrogen is not given or given then also you just directly write that aldehyde so this is actually formation of aldehyde now just like rosenman reaction is giving only the aldehyde product similarly we can synthesize ketone only from the acid chloride so ketone so what we will do rcocl that is acid chloride when it is reacted with dialkyl cadmium so i am putting r1 hol2 cd dialkyl cadmium so what it will give formation of ketone r co so this is giving ketone only product so example ch3 co cl plus ch3 hol2 cadmium so it is giving acetone now next is synthesis of carboxylic acid so first is oxidation of alcohol alcohol and aldehyde so what we have seen in oxidation of alcohol that is in aldehyde case that we put mild oxidizing agent but if we want to get the carboxylic acid then we no need to put any mild oxidizing agent we will put normal oxidizing agent like kno4 which is a strong oxidizing agent so what it will give so it will reduce oxidize that alcohol to aldehyde and followed by oxidation of aldehyde to carboxylic acid so r ch2 oh it will give carboxylic acid so example so what we can see that from alcohol we will get aldehyde and immediately it is oxidized to carboxylic acid 
So, for carbonyl carbonyl for oxidation, we will we will not get this intermediate this aldehyde compound. So, always we will end up with carboxylic acid. So, from alcohol, we will end up with carboxylic acid. So, this intermediate step, if we don't write also, then also it is right. No problem. So, similarly, we can see that from any aldehyde, if we oxidize by KMnO4, so we will get the formation of carboxylic acid. Now, next is some Dignard reagent. Now, what will be the reaction? R M G X it is reacted with dry ice. We know that dry ice is the solid carbon dioxide. So, dry ice is reacted, it will give formation of this intermediate compound. When it is hydrolyzed, so it will give formation of carboxylic acid. So, like this we can see that for synthesis of any kind of carboxylic acid, we can use this Gignard reagent and we can get that targeted carboxylic acid compound. So, this is carboxylic acid synthesis. And next is hydrolysis of nitrile compound. Hydrolysis of nitrile compound. So, what is hydrolysis of nitrile compound? So, RCN when it is hydrolyzed in presence of acid, it will give formation of RCOH. So, example acetonitrile it will give formation of acetic acid. So, these are all preparation of carboxylic acid, ketone and aldehyde compound. Now, we will see the properties of carboxylic acid and aldehyde compound. First, we will see the boiling point and the solubility. So, what we will see for carbonyl compound? So, this is the carbonyl compound that is aldehyde or ketone. If we put R1 equal to hydrogen, this is aldehyde, or if we put uh, both the alkyl uh, group in R1 and R2, then it is ketone. So, what we will see that in ketone or aldehyde compound, this carbon is electron deficient because oxygen is strong electron withdrawing group that is ele highly electronegative. So, it will pull the electron density towards itself. So, we will get a electron density movement towards oxygen. So, we will get partial positive character in carbon center. Similarly, we will get partial negative character in oxygen center. So, we will say a bond moment or dipole moment is there in carbon compound. So, due to this dipole moment, actually this compound shown the higher boiling point compared to its alkane analog means same molecular weight alkane compound because this dipole is interacted with another dipole it will give a dipole dipole interaction and due to the, this dipole dipole interaction the solubility sorry that boiling point is higher. Similarly, if we see the solubility case so when this carbon compound is dissolved in water so, we will see that up to 4 carbon it is highly soluble. Then, with the increase of number of carbon, that solubility decreases sharply. And for higher analog compound, these are almost insoluble. So, what will happen when for the lower analog that is up to 4 carbon, what it is happening? That is, this form hydrogen bond with the water. So, this will form hydrogen bonding like this. So, like this way actually it is shown that solubility in water. Now, for carboxylic acid what we will see? So, carboxylic acid actually forms intramolecular hydrogen bonding. So, due to this reason actually it boils at high, very high temperature. So, almost all carboxylic acid analog except form, formic acid, formic acid has low relatively boiling point almost all carboxylic acid has high boiling point. So, this forms actually intramolecular hydrogen bond and when it is dissolved in water for lower analog means R is low up to 4 carbon. So, it is showing high highly solubility in water. So, when the R increases that means hydrophobic part that is R increases 
then the solubility decreases. We know that fatty acid, these are all carboxylic acid means what is available in our edible oil. So these are actually insoluble because these are all higher analog of fatty acid. So what it will happen when it is dissolved in water, so it will form a intermolecular. Here intramolecular and when it is dissolved in water, it will show intermolecular. So like this actually intermolecular hydrogen bond is formed means water molecule will form hydrogen bond with carbonyl and this OH bond mean form the carboxylic acid group form hydrogen bond with oxygen. So like this intermolecular hydrogen bond is formed. So from if it is in pure form then it is showing intramolecular hydrogen bond means two carboxylic acid form hydrogen bonding and if uh, it is mixed in water then it will form intermolecular hydrogen bond. Now we see the chemical properties of the compound. So first we will see that addition of first we will uh, see the chemical properties of aldehyde and ketone. So first we will see that addition of nucleophile to that carbonyl compound. So as already discussed that in carbonyl compound carbon is electron deficient that means it is electron deficient means positively charged partially. So nucleophile which is electron rich so it has a tendency to react with that electron deficient center. So nucleophile will react to carbon and it will give reaction like this. So this is the all general kind of nucleophilic addition to that carbonyl group. Now the question is that the reactivity of the aldehyde and or aldehyde or ketone are same for this nucleophilic addition of the reaction. The answer is no because as we know that that carbonyl compound it is in sp2 hybridized and we know that sp2 hybridized the bond angle are 120 degree that means if R1 and R2 are bulky in size or steric sterically crowded alkyl group then these are far apart from each other. But when nucleophile is added to that carbon so they will come to close together because now it is sp3 hybridized so the bond angle become 109 degree. So it will give that steric repulsion. And due to this reason, the reactivity will be less. So, ketone will so we I mean, slower reaction with nucleophile, whereas the aldehyde so faster reaction in presence of nucleophile. So, this is one reason. Another reason is if R1 and R2 are alkyl group, then what we will see? So, we know that alkyl group has positive inductive effect plus I effect. So, it will reduce the partial positive character of carbonyl carbon. So we know that nucleophile is a tendency to react to the electron deficient center. Now if the electron deficiency is reduced by the adjacent alkyl group then the reaction tendency to that nucleophile to that carbonyl carbon will be reduced. So that is why also the ketone has lower tendency to react with the nucleophile. So, we will see that lots of ketone are relatively not reactive or unreactive towards nucleophile. Now, first is addition of nucleophile. So, here we will see some series of reaction that is first here we will write the nucleophile and here is we will get the product. So, first is so here actually always we will write aldehyde and for some case this is ketone. So, nucleophile will be ammonia, what it will give formation of imine compound. So, this reaction also possible for ketone like acetone. So, it will also give reaction and it will give imine compound for acetone. So, this is the first reaction. Second, again RCHO R equal to alkyl or aryl, RCHO or CH3CO. CH3. So, acetone. So, most likely that acetone is the most reactive ketone of the ketone family and other for other compound 
with keto methyl group is there that compound also somewhat reactive means let us suppose butanone 2 butanone so this keto methyl group is present then also it is reactive this compound when it is reacted with hydroxyl amine so what is the product so it will form oxime so this is oxime compound and for acetone or other ketone it will also oxime will be formed now next is hydrazine so what it will give hydrazone this is hydrazone now similarly for acetone this form the hydrazone now if we put phenyl hydrazine so it will give phenyl hydrazone and if we put 2,4 dinitro phenyl hydrazine this is also known as Brady's reagent so this is also a detection of aldehyde or ketone means carbonyl compound this reagent is useful for detection of carbonyl compound so this will give phenyl hydrazone compound so 2,4 dnp hydrazone so this compound actually forms as a yellow precipitate so if we put alkaline 2,4 dinitro phenyl hydrazine into that carbonyl compound so if we get yellow or orange precipitate then we confirm that carbonyl group is present next is reaction with cyanide so when it is reacted with cyanide that means either potassium cyanide or hardened cyanide in alkaline condition so what it will give formation of cyanohydrin compound this is cyanohydrin so this reaction is possible for only acetone compound means for ketone and for aldehyde this is possible for every cases only that for aryl aldehyde this reaction occurs differently so first we will see some example for aldehyde then we will go to that aryl so example acetaldehyde so it will give formation of acetaldehyde cyanohydrin compound so now from here if we hydrolyze this one as we have seen that hydrolysis of nitrile compound it will give formation of carboxylic acid so if we hydrolyze this then we will get alpha hydroxy carboxylic acid so this is very important organic transformation reaction so always this kind of work means question is asked how we can synthesize from aldehyde to alpha hydroxy carboxylic acid this is the example now next is if it is benzaldehyde so benzaldehyde what it will happen if we put cyanide so cyanide first it will react with that carbonyl and it will give formation of this intermediate now if you see that this hydrogen is mild acidic in nature and this is stronger base O minor so it will take the proton from here and it will give formation of carbon ion now this carbon ion is stabilized by the adjacent cyanide group and the phenyl group because this cyanide this carbon ion is resonance stabilized by this cyanide and the phenyl group now this carbon ion will further react with aldehyde another aldehyde and it will give formation of this intermediate compound now you can see that this as the cyanide group is present this is electronegative so it pulls the electron density this OH is relatively more acidic so it will give proton transfer and it will form the this cyanide will be lived from that system so it will give formation of benzoin this is known as benzoin and this reaction is very well known for benzoin condensation reaction so this is a, a very important reaction so we are discussing the nucleophilic addition to the carbonyl compound so what uh, still we discussed that addition of various amine compound cyanide now we will discuss addition of alcohol to the carbonyl this is a very important reaction so what do we see this is aldehyde now when this aldehyde is reacted with alcohol let us say methanol in presence of acid or base so we will get formation of this compound so this is known as hemiacetal this hemiacetal is highly unstable in presence of acid that means in presence of acid if we do the reaction we will, will not end it up with this so we will get another addition of methanol and we will get acetal this is the compound which is known as acetal so this reaction is very well known for aldehyde and for ketone this reaction is not that much useful that means it's not occurred but when we add some diol compound 
the in that case this reaction occur so i will discuss step by step so first we will discuss the formation of hemiacetal and followed by acetal so first we will take base catalyzed addition of alcohol now taking aldehyde so this is the base catalyzed now we know that oxygen has lone pair of electron so this lone pair of electron will attack to the carbonyl compound now this carbonyl compound will get nucleophilic attack and it will form this intermediate compound we know that this is highly acidic and this is basic so immediately proton transfer will occur and it will give formation of hemiacetal compound so this is the hemiacetal compound now this kind of question always asks that hemiacetal are base stabilized but acid unstable so i will tell that why it is base catalyzed a base stable because if we put base then most of the case the reaction probability will formation of this intermediate compound that is alkoxide ion this alkoxide will be formed now this reaction that means formation of again aldehyde back and ch3o minus is not feasible because ch3o minus is not a good living group due to this reason these are base stabilized so this reaction will not occur now why it is acid unstable so now we will take acid catalyzed so when we put acid so always this acid will protonate the carbonyl first so for mechanism we will get protonated carbonyl in this case actually methanol will attack to that carbonyl we know that this carbon is now highly electron deficient so it will form this hemiacetal intermediate now what we have discussed earlier that hemiacetal are unstable in acid why it is so when acid is there so it will give proton to that oh group and it will form this intermediate cation now we know that water is a good living group so water will be eliminated and carbocation will be formed so what is the carbocation what is the reason of formation of this carbocation because ocs3 is there so it will stabilize the carbocation so it will form the resonance stabilized carbocation now in presence of methanol again nucleophilic attack will occur and it will form this intermediate compound which will give after proton elimination this formation this is the acetal compound which is discussed earlier here one thing i want to tell that every step is that reversible reaction in this case so every step is forward direction and that backward direction reaction is possible so i am not writing every case so this is actually every step is that forward direction and every, uh, that backward direction is possible so we are getting from aldehyde to acetal so if we write freshly then we will get that from aldehyde if we add methanol and acid we will get acetal but for base catalyzed case we will get only heavy hemiacetal compound so that's why i told that hemiacetal are unstable in acid but it is stabilized in base we can write clearly that this acetal now why this is important reaction this reaction is useful if we want to do some reaction where that carbonyl group is present and we want to keep that carbonyl group intact and we want to do the other reaction in that compound then if we do this reaction then we will get the acetal compound once we will treat the acetal with acid we will get back the carbonyl compound back so this is a very useful for protection of the carbonyl compound now what we discussed that for ketone what is what is the reaction is possible so for ketone kind of that acetone acetone and cyclic ketone like cyclohexanone this type of ketone this kind of reaction is possible that is reaction with acetone with ethylene glycol so this is ethylene glycol and h plus so we will get formation of this cyclic compound so here this reaction is feasible because the an entropy effect so in this case entropy is increasing and due to this reason this reaction is possible now two important reaction will be discussed that is oxidation and reduction 
we already discussed that for synthesis of carboxylic acid if we oxidize the aldehyde we will get formation of carboxylic acid this is very common reaction that is rcho if we oxidize by kmno4 alkaline kmno4 it will give formation of carboxylic acid which is further acidified it will give formation of carboxylic acid the question is what will happen for ketone compound so ketone compound here the bond breaking is occur that means that one c double bond o c and this c means this carbon and this carbon bond will break so it will form now for acyclic one what will happen let us take this compound so the for the acyclic compound the question is that there is possibility of breaking of two side of that cc bond that means this side and this side the question is that which side will break so this is decided by the pops rule pops rule will is telling that the cc bond will break that side where the maximum number of alkyl group is present that means for this case this side will break and this side will not break what we will get according to pops rule the maximum number of alkyl group side will break so we will get the breaking of cc bond here this ch2 will be converted to c double bond oh and this carbonyl also carbon converted to c double bond oh so we will get two equivalent of acetic acid now next reduction there are three kind of reduction are there for carbonyl compound that is one is reduction by zinc mercury in presence of hcl that is known as clemenson reduction so first we will discuss clemenson reduction so clemenson reduction what is this actually this is the reaction where the carbonyl is converted to alkane let us take acetone zinc mercury plus hcl so it will give formation of alkane that means this carbonyl is converted to alkane moiety so this is converted to alkane so this is a very useful reaction for conversion of that carbonyl compound to alkane so similar another reaction is there that is wolf kirchner reduction actually this kind of reaction is sometimes asked or sometimes it is given in some transformation reaction that means conversion of a to b to c and in the uh, mid of the transformation it is given so due for this purpose actually we, we have to remember so what is wolf wolf kirchner so wolf kirchner reduction also transformation of carbonyl compound to alkane let us take aldehyde so previously we took ketone now we are taking aldehyde this reaction is possible for both cases means for i am saying here that for aldehyde it is also possible for ketone similarly that clemenson reduction is possible for aldehyde also so now here the reagent is hydrazine and koh potassium hydroxide and nh2nh2 so it will give formation of alkene so r is the alkyl group and ch3 is converted to means from cho it is converted to ch3 that means it is alkene now example wise if we take benzaldehyde if we do reaction with hydrazine with koh so it will give toluene now next is reduction with phosphorus and hi this is also similar reaction this is also convert this to alkene we can see that by this clemenson reduction wolf kirchner reduction and this phosphorus hi reduction in all case we are getting from carbonyl compound to alkene and other reaction that is reduction by lithium aluminum hydride so it is also important reaction and we will see that lithium aluminum hydride is also useful for reduction of carboxylic acid so what it will happen reduction by lithium aluminum hydride so this is very strong reducing agent so it reduces alcohol to alcohol if other uh, some functional group is present which is substance to, to means which is also feasible that uh, to reduce so that also reduce in presence of lithium aluminum hydride 
so this will give function of alcohol now if we do the lithium aluminum hydride reduction to carboxylic acid this will also give formation of alcohol so for means ketone it will give secondary alcohol for acid it will give primary alcohol now if we take sodium borohydride in means instead of lithium aluminum hydride that is actually relatively mild reducing agent and that is very selective for that carbonyl compound that means so nabh but if we take then it is very selective for the carbonyl compound that means if carbonyl means ketone or aldehyde is present then obviously it will be reduced by sodium borohydride and it will give formation of alcohol but other carbonyl compound like acid or ester is present then sodium borohydride cannot reduce for that purpose the selective reduction of acid it is borane compound is useful that means b2h6 so b2h6 also very important reagent means for carbonyl means ketone or aldehyde reduction sodium borohydride is selective and for carboxylic acid selectively reduction that borane is useful so it will give formation of formation of alcohol so these are all reduction of aldehyde and acid compound now next we will see some reaction of carboxylic acid compound that is when carboxylic acid is reacted with pcl5 it will give formation of acid chloride now this acid chloride is reacted further with ammonia it will give formation of amide so this is also acid derivative now if we react with further an alcohol so we will get formation of ester this is the formation of ester compound now next is reaction with amine compound acidoloic plus ammonia so it will give acid base reaction we know that carboxylic acid is acid and ammonia is base so it will give acid base reaction and formation of salt so this is ammonium carboxylate if it is r is ch3 then it will be ammonium acetate after formation of this if we heat this then water will be eliminated so it will form amide so this type of reaction is also important for dicarboxylic acid like thalic acid so we know this is thalic acid when it is reacted with ammonia so it will give formation of this di ammonium salt when it is heated water is eliminated and it will form diamide it is further heated then it will form thalimide this thalimide is important for synthesis of amine compound which we will discuss later now this section is very important that is reaction of alpha hydrogen of carbonyl compound why this alpha hydrogen is very important if you see the structure of the carbonyl compound we can see this is the compound now here if r group may be present or hydrogen may be present so here also same this carbon is known as alpha hydrogen means this carbon is alpha carbon and alpha carbon is attached with the hydrogen that is alpha carbon hydrogen when it is treated with base base will take the proton and it will form conjugate base so what is the conjugate base of this so it will form this conjugate base this conjugate base is stabilized by the adjacent carbonyl group this is known as enolate now due to this reason these are highly relatively stable and due to this reason this alpha hydrogen also show acidity now we can easily predict that if other carbonyl group is present in adjacent to this carbon then this acidity of this carbon will be more so due to this reason this hydrogen pk is almost similar to that phenol or something else is pk 9 to 10 that's a we can tell that this ch2 is relatively acidic in nature in presence of base it will form immediately the carbon ion now what is the reaction of alpha hydrogen the very well known alpha hydrogen reaction is aldol condensation reaction so aldol condensation reaction what is this any carbonyl compound which has some alpha hydrogen and that will reacted with base and it will form 
first carbon ion and this carbon ion is further added to that another carbonyl compound and it will form a alder compound if possible in some cases that further elimination of water is possible then it will form a alkene means alpha beta unsaturated car carbonyl compound so this is actually al aldol condensation acid let's uh, take example of acetaldehyde this is acetaldehyde so when it is treated with base let us take alkaline sodium hydroxide means alcoholic sodium hydroxide what it will give formation of this carbon ion now as we discuss that this carbon ion will highly stabilized by this adjacent carbonyl group now this carbon ion will further added to that another carbonyl compound that is another acetaldehyde compound it will give formation of this compound so it will take proton from the solvent so it will form so this aldol compound will be produced now why it is aldol so this is aldehyde l aldehyde group is there and all means alcohol also there so this is a formation of aldehyde and alcohol so this is due to this reason this is aldol now in presence of base e1cp mechanism occur what is e1cp formation of carbon ion now this carbon ion will give elimination of oh minus that means water is eliminated and it will form alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compound alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compound now question is that if we mix two different carbonyl compound that is let us take acetone and acetaldehyde so i am not writing again the full mechanism so we will get four set of compound so the four set of compound first the carbon ion will form here and it will add to both here and here two set will form from one carbon ion and here also one carbon ion will form and this carbon ion will add to this and this so we will get four set of compound so what are the four set one is ch3 so this four set of compound will be formed so we can see that in one case one this acetone group is there here also this acetone group is there and for this that acetaldehyde group is there here also acetaldehyde group is there now this reaction is useful for such case where the ketone containing alpha hydrogen and aldehyde contain the without alpha hydrogen in that case this reaction is very useful and that is known as claisen condensation reaction that is known as claisen smith condensation reaction is that reaction let us take acetophenone this acetophenone has alpha hydrogen now this acetophenone is reacted with benzaldehyde so benzaldehyde has no alpha hydrogen so when these are reacted in presence of base so what will happen so this will give formation of majorly one compound that is this compound actually this is shown as after elimination of water so what will happen so carbon ion will be formed here and it will add to this carbonyl compound followed by elimination of water so it will give formation of this alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compound so this is very useful reaction for that compound which have alpha hydrogen for ketone compound and aldehyde which, which does not have any alpha hydrogen so this is very useful reaction this is also called cross aldol condensation cross aldol condensation or this claisen smith condensation reaction now next is parkin condensation reaction so parkin condensation reaction this reaction is specific for aromatic aldehyde that is benzaldehyde so we'll take benzaldehyde another reagent that is alpha hydrogen carbonyl compound here it is anhydride acid anhydride let us take 
acidic anhydride so we can see this is the carbonyl compound carbonyl group and this is alpha hydrogen and here we will take most of the case base is sodium acetate now what will happen so it will give formation of cinnamic acid followed by hydrolysis it will give formation of cinnamic acid so this is cinnamic acid so what is the mechanism so first when it is treated with base that is oac minus acetate minus it will take proton from here and it will form the carbon as ch2 minus co which will be resonance stabilized by adjacent carbonyl group this is the benzaldehyde so this carbon will add to that benzaldehyde and it will form the nucleophilic addition compound now it will immediately put take proton from acetic acid and it will give formation of this alpha sorry beta hydroxy carbonyl compound now this beta hydroxy compound water is eliminated from this hydrogen and this oh group and it will form this alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compound once this is hydrolyzed so we'll get formation of cinnamic acid alpha beta unsaturated carboxylic acid plus carboxylic acid acetic acid this is known as parkin condensation reaction now next is haloform reaction the question is what are what are the compound is known as haloform example is chloroform bromoform and iodoform so some reaction is also known as iodoform reaction because this iodoform has typical iodex like smell and it is precipitated out from the solution so we will see that some reaction which is giving this haloform reaction and if we do the reaction in presence of a reagent which gives iodoform that reaction also known as iodoform reaction now we will see what are the compound that shows that haloform reaction so remember that compound containing keto methyl group keto methyl this key, this is known as keto and this is methyl so compound containing keto methyl group are susceptible to giving haloform reaction so what are the example so let's take acetaldehyde so we can see this is the methyl and this is the keto so this compound is keto methyl compound so only the acetaldehyde is the compound which shows the acetaldehyde is the aldehyde compound which shows the haloform reaction other any aldehyde does not show this haloform reaction so what is the reagent naoh and cl2 some case it is written as naocl or caocl cl that means bleaching powder so these are the some reagent usually used for the haloform reaction so what will happen so it will form successive chlorination first ch2cl successive chlorination now once this will form then base will attack and it will give formation of this intermediate so this base will this o minus will comes and ccl3 minus will be produced that means this carbonyl is formed because we know that chlorine is strong electron withdrawing group and this will stabilize the negative charge on the carbon immediate acid base reaction will occur and it will form chloroform plus formate once it is acidified it will form chloroform plus formic acid so any compound which contain the keto methyl group just cut down accordingly i am showing there so this is the total mechanism let us take compound rco ch3 so just cut down here and it will give coh that means r will attach with this carboxylic acid group this will give halogen according to halogen it will give ch x3 x equal to cl br i so if we change the reagent naoh i2 naoh br2 
so we will get accordingly the different allopharm that is bromoform, iodoform etc. This reaction is also very important reaction to identify the ketomethyl group that any compound which have ketomethyl group is present. So we can identify by this and this reaction also can differentiate acetaldehyde from the formaldehyde. So this is very important reaction because formaldehyde does not have the ketomethyl group. That means here we will get R, C, CWNOH and CH, X. So this is the total halvorm reaction. Now next reaction which we will discuss that is reaction of alpha hydrogen for carboxylic acid. So let us take example of alpha hydrogen that is this type of car carboxylic acid which have alpha hydrogen. So in this case when it is reacted with X2 and red phosphorus X equal to Cl and Br followed by hydrolysis. So it will give formation of alpha halo carboxylic acid. So if we put another equivalent, so it will give another equivalent, another, another halogen inclusion to that carboxylic acid compound that means gem dihalide alpha gem dihalide compound. Hell Bollard Jelensky reaction. This reaction also known as Hell Bollard Jelensky reaction. The next is if any compound aldehyde or ketone compound which does not have alpha hydrogen. So what will happen? Let us take example of benzaldehyde. We know that benzaldehyde does not have any alpha hydrogen compound. When it is treated with base, so what will happen? Addition of necrophile to the carbonyl compound. Now this hydride transfer to that another carbonyl compound that is benzaldehyde, another benzaldehyde. So it will go to this carbon and it will form these two compounds that is benzoic acid and alkoxide of benze benzyl alcohol. So it is simple that this is stronger base and this is acid so it will immediately take the proton and it will form the carboxylate and benzyl alcohol. So once it is acidified, so it will form benzoic acid and benzyl alcohol. So this reaction is known as Kanijaro reaction. So Kanijaro reaction for which type of carbonyl compound is possible? That is compound must be aldehyde. First thing it is very required. This compound must be aldehyde and the aldehyde compound should not have any alpha hydrogen. So this is two primary criteria for Kanijaro reaction. Another third, third also very important that is the reaction occurs in strong basic medium. So we can see that in basic medium only this kind of reaction is possible. So strong basic medium also, also required. So this is Kanijaro reaction. Now the question is that if we add benzaldehyde and formaldehyde, formaldehyde we also know that it, it does not have any alpha hydrogen. So if we add both that uh, benzaldehyde and formaldehyde, what will happen? So let us take that example. This is formaldehyde. So formaldehyde and benzaldehyde or any other aldehyde are mixed and is treated with base. Just remember that always this base addition reaction will occur for formaldehyde because these two hydrogen are very less steric. So it will immediately allow the OH- to attack to that carbonyl compound. That OH- will attack to the carbonyl and it will give formation of this intermediate. So hydride transfer will occur and it will form in like this way. So this is O- and this is hydrogen, this is hydrogen plus. So this is stronger base because this is alkoxide and this is stronger acid, formic acid. So immediately acid base reaction will occur. So formation of benzyl alcohol plus formate. So once it is acidified, it will form benzyl alcohol plus formic acid. So what is the Kanijaro reaction? We can see that if we add formaldehyde and uh, other aldehyde which is which does not have any alpha hydrogen, always this formic acid, this formaldehyde is oxidized to formic acid and 
whatever the other aldehyde is there that will be reduced to alcohol this actually reaction also known as cross aldol sorry cross canizero reaction because two different aldehyde which is taken so this is canizero reaction so we just write freshly what will happen we'll get one molecule of benzyl aldehyde will reduce to benzyl alcohol benzyl alcohol and one molecule of benzyl aldehyde will oxidize to benzoic acid so this is one molecule will okay, reduce to benzyl alcohol one molecule is oxidized to benzoic acid for cross canizero reaction one aldehyde is taken which is also absence of alpha hydrogen and formaldehyde why formaldehyde because this reagent always allow the reaction that it will be oxidized and other counter aldehyde will be reduced so in this case always this formaldehyde will be oxidized and whatever the aldehyde is taken which, which does not have any alpha hydrogen will be reduced so benzyl benzyl aldehyde will be reduced to benzyl alcohol and formaldehyde will be oxidized to formic acid so this is cross canizero reaction now we will see a very important reaction that is acetaldehyde and formaldehyde in presence of base so this is the reaction where we can see both that cross aldol as well as cross canizero reaction occurs so what will happen we can see that this aldehyde has alpha hydrogen so it will give formation of carbon ion now this carbon ion will be added to that formaldehyde form this compound now once it is acidified means it takes proton from the solvent so let us take ethanol so it will give formation of beta hydroxy aldehyde now again in presence of base it will form carbon ion and it will add another formaldehyde and it will give formation of another molecule that is this kind of molecule now again another reaction another molecule reaction of formaldehyde followed by acid means proton proton addition from solvent so what will happen we can see that this aldehyde does not have any alpha hydrogen now in this case actually so in every case we can see that this is cross aldol reaction so every case cross aldol reaction different aldehyde reaction occurs so now here the cross canizero reaction occurs that is we if we add that formaldehyde with base so what will happen so this will give this so if we write this aldehyde like this so this hydride will transfer to this carbonyl compound now what will happen we'll get the compound that is very important compound pent erythritol its name as pent erythritol plus formate so if we acidify it then we will get formic acid this reaction also known as tollens reaction this is also tollens reaction is name so what we can see this here first cross aldol reaction occurs then when this this step occurs in this case cross canizero so this is the reaction where both cross aldol as well as cross canizero reaction occurs and this is known as pent erythritol now the next reaction and that is for carboxylic acid this is very important that is kolbe electrolysis so kolbe electrolysis what is that so kolbe electrolysis actually reaction where carboxylate salt is taken as electrolyte and it is electrolytically reduced carboxylate salt are used and it is electrolytically oxidized to form alkane compound so what will happen so we know that it gives one electron so electron elimination is oxidation so it will form radical compound this radical now this bond c c bond is homolytically cleaved and form a benzyl radical that means 
here oxidation occurs because electron are eliminated so it is from radical and this radical is giving carbon dioxide plus benzyl radical now two benzyl radical combine to form a alkane compound means hydrocarbon compound so radical coupling so give, will give the means two benzyl radical will combine and it will give hydrocarbon compound so what is the net reaction if you write so let's take r co minus sodium salt when it is electrolyzed uh, electrochemically oxidized so what will happen r co dot and it will give r dot plus co2 and another r dot which will combine to form r r so this is actually hydrocarbon so if accordingly if we take any r we will get the combination of now next is decarboxylation of carboxylic acid so taking any sodium salt of carboxylate is reacted with soda lime soda lime means NaOH plus calcium oxide is it heated so it will give formation of alkane compound so this gives decarboxylation compound so what is the reaction let's take sodium acetate soda lime so just remember that soda lime what is the chemical combination that is sodium hydroxide and calcium oxide so it will give formation of alkane plus so we studied various synthesis of aldehyde ketone and carboxylic acid and their chemical properties now we will see some question so what we have still understood so we will just check our understanding here the question is that identify a to d so the given reaction is this pentanone which is reacted with methyl magnesium iodide followed by hydrolysis then it is giving a which is further treated with sulfuric acid and heat then it is giving b then it is reacted with ozone and followed by zinc water which is giving c which is further reacted with oh minus and is giving d so we have to find out that what is a to d is there so now let's start with the reaction with first reaction so we know this this is the methyl magnesium iodide which is this methyl is carbon ion and it will preferentially added to that carbonyl compound the reaction will occur so this compound will be formed which is hydrolyzed form the alcohol tertiary alcohol so this is actually tertiary alcohol tertiary alcohol now when it is reacted with sulfuric acid in presence of heat we know that the alkene will be formed because dehydration will occur and we know according to sedgier rule the major product will be most substituted product so what are the alkene will will get one alkene will be this and another alkene will be this so we can see that for this alkene that most substitution is there so we can say that this is the major product will be formed this is the c sorry this is actually b now this b will be treated with ozone so ozone and followed by zinc water what will it will give so we know the ozone analysis is giving aldehyde and ketone so this double bond will break and it will give formation of aldehyde and ketone now this is the c compound now when it is reacted with base intramolecular aldol condensation reaction occur so we know that this is the methyl group is there so this methyl group is added to that this aldehyde compound and it will form this compound so this is actually a this is b this is c and this is d next question is this carbonyl compound which is reacted to water giving a so what is a is now before answering this question we have to understand that what is exactly reaction 
occurs when a carbonyl compound is reacted with water. So, a, when a carbonyl compound is reacted with water, it forms GM diol. That means R C O R1 it is reacted with water, so it will give GM diol. Now, why this kind of reaction does not occur in generally? Because this intermediate is means this type of gem dial compound is readily susceptible to uh, release water and get back to the carbonyl compound. That's why this kind of compound are relatively means this type of gem dial compound are relatively unstable. But when suppose this carbonyl is highly electron deficient or highly strained by some something some other uh, electronic factor like dipole dipole repulsion or anything in that case this carbonyl has tendency to get hydrated and form this compound so what exactly is occurring here so you can see three carbonyl moiety is there due to three carbonyl moiety is there this carbonyl moiety every carbonyl moiety has a dipole moment so every dipole moment are directed to like this. Now due to strong dipole dipole interaction, these are repelled to each other and due to this reason, it faces highly dipole dipole repulsion forces. So due to this reason, it get hydrated and absorb water. Question is that which carbonyl will uh, hydrate it? So we can see several example are get here. So first thing we have to understand once is it is hydrated this will form gem dial compound so what are the two gem dial are given here this b and this d we have to understand that which gem dial will reduce the dipole dipole repulsion least when it is hydrated the dipole dipole repulsion remain least in the compound for this carbonyl if it is hydrated then it will give the least amount of repulsion that means when it is hydrated here then it will give the dipole dipole repulsion here only. This is actually 180 degree apart from each other. But here it is closer. This will unstable. Once it will be hydrated, this will be the compound. Final the answer is D. So D is the right answer. Now next question is which explain the boiling point of carbonyl compound or aldehyde. Boiling point of aldehyde or ketone is explained by which forces first is hydrogen bonding second vanderwaal forces c dipole dipole attraction and d any other so we know that for carbonyl compound if we draw that dipole moment is there so we know that two dipole in interact with each other and that gives the higher boiling point so d is the right is sorry c is the right answer that is dipole dipole attraction now next question is reaction with acetaldehyde with excess formaldehyde in presence of base what will happen we just remember what we discussed that it will give first cross aldol reaction followed by cross carnizero reaction the reaction will give the formation of this alcohol this is the right answer which will form this c is the right answer that means first it will react with formaldehyde and it will form this intermediate aldehyde which is further undergo cross canizero reaction and it will form the alcohol so this is the right answer now next question is so this is the lactone this lactone will be form of the given four example which is treated with bases this will give the lactone so which is the right answer which will give the lactone formation first we can see this is a carboxylic acid and ester group is there and here aldehyde and carboxylic acid there here both carboxylic acid there and here both the aldehyde is there this is the example of intramolecular candizoro reaction so what is this taking the example of d we know that D is the example which undergoes that intramolecular candizoro reaction. What we can write? So this is the two aldehyde group. OH minus first react with aldehyde and it will give the intermediate like this. Now once this is occurred, 
this O minus will go back to that and this hydride will transfer to the another aldehyde and it will give formation of alcohol. So now you can see that this alcohol and acid group in same compound. So this will give formation of lactone formation. So this will give the lactone formation and we can write this. This is equivalent to this. So D is the right answer which gives the intramolecular Kanizaro reaction and give the formation of lactone. Which of the given compound does not react with failing solution? Now herein I want to mention that the failing solution is that compound is the reagent which detect the aldehyde over the ketone compound. Means ketone will not respond in presence of failing solution only aldehyde respond the failing solution. So what are the reaction occurs if it is aldehyde then in presence of basic actually failing solution is the basic copper 2 plus solution means copper sulphate in presence of basic medium it is reacted. So it will give formation of Q plus oxide. So rate Q plus oxide is precipitated out. So immediately we can detect that aldehyde group is present. Only that aldehyde group gives this reaction. We have to remember that failing solution is only the characteristic detection for aldehyde. Here which are the compounds are aldehyde? First is benzaldehyde is, is aldehyde. B is acetaldehyde that means it is aldehyde. C is glucose. So glucose we know that it contains CHO group. This is actually glucose structure. That means glucose also contains CHO group means aldehyde group. That means it also responds in failing solution. Only acetophenone. Acetophenone is that means ketone group is there. That means it will not respond to that failing solution. So D is the right answer.